Because the weather today is absolutely atrocious outside, I've decided to come inside and inside the uh, greenhouse and do a little bit of a, a talk in here. Now, this is what I call my hybrid greenhouse. I'll just stand here and we'll try and do a zoom round on this and I'll explain a little bit more. Now, it is a hybrid greenhouse in the respect that it is also a potting shed. I originally got the greenhouse for free at the uh, back end of last year. It was full of glass where it was. I, I dismantled it, uh, took the glass out just and then got it onto a trailer, got it up to where I live now, but grassy bottom here. And I've, I've put it up at the back end of the property and uh, it, it's just great. What it is, is I've created this. So one half of it has become a potting shed and the other half is a greenhouse. I, I don't need either of both uh, too big. I don't need a big greenhouse. I don't need a big potting shed. No point. If you've got a small garden, this would be absolutely ideal for you. Now, I've used quite an expensive tin here and I spent a fortune on it, to be honest. Uh, that's tin. And on the other side, it's a green colour and it's really, really nice. Now, to stop it rattling, the supplier thought this may rattle in here. Now, just, just remember that this, where the tin is, it would have been glass. Uh, I'll try and show you that. See, that would have been grass, glass and it would have been two, one, two, three, four panes of glass down there. So I've put one single sheet into each section and then we've used this grip fill just to create that. Let's, uh, let's try and get it around to you. Ooh, wrong way. That way, so it's a grip fill. Probably show you that better from this box here. Grip fill. And then what that does is I've sealed all the joints and it's made a really good job of it. Now, I have, obviously I've got all the little bits and bobs and while we're here, we might as well take the opportunity to see what we've got going. I took, did some seedlings at the back end of last year. You obviously know I'm into my ornamental grasses. And is steep calamagrostis or Acnotherum calamagrostis as it is now known. Uh, that's, there you go. They're already uh, growing away, but they, they set off in September from seeds that I collected out, out at uh, my own garden here at Grassy Bottom. Then we've got Elymus magellanicus, a superb blue form of grass. Not showing blue at the moment. You can see hints of blue there. But these are little seedlings or little seeds that I planted and grew them into seedlings at the moment. Got them in these little uh, cells. And then we've got China Chloa rubra, one of my favourites. If you think about Carex uh, buccananii or Carex comins bronze, put that on steroids this one gets to about two and a half foot and it has lovely tones of olives, greens, uh, brownie tones, pinky tones. It has all sorts of little tones in, uh, which come better when we get a little bit cooler weather. But it's a, it's a big clump former. Well, I say big clump former, two foot clump former. And it looks great in any garden. And if you if you plant several of these things, they look great. Uh, we've got some uh, strawberries, which was given, me, given back to me by my neighbour. We actually had hundreds of these things. Right out there where I'm showing you now, that was full of strawberries. And when I came here, I decided I didn't want all these strawberries. There's too many. So I gave the neighbour them uh, and then we got rid of the rest. And, and then I decided I'm going to grow some into large pots and I've got some back from him. So that's nice that we've done that. Right. The real reason for today's talk, sphagnum moss. Here we go. Sphagnum moss. Jumbo, it's just a, a jumbo bag. It's not. It's not jumbo sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is sphagnum moss. Uh, and sphagnum moss, as you all know, is usually used for hanging baskets. So we'll look at it. And you can buy it right now. I bought this less than two weeks ago. You can buy it right now. And this is what it's going to look like in your garden centres. It's going to look a bit dead. It won't matter at all. Look a bit dead. A little bit brown, but it's fine. And it does, uh, and obviously you use it for lining in your, in your hanging baskets. If you don't want to use the uh, the new type of liners that they produce, you can use this. Now, what you don't realise is there is another use for sphagnum moss. I think there's several uses for sphagnum moss, but one one I came across from a kind of a, a not so much of a bonsai master, but a bonsai man was that the fact that you can use sphagnum moss to create new a new root zone. Now, let's have a little move around. So what I'm doing at the moment, I've wild 
collected these. Um, not from out of any uh, woodland, but from somebody's garden. Here's another one. This is an oak with a lot of damage on here, and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to enhance this uh, oak, if I can get it going, um, by exposing even more of that, so getting rid of some of this stuff. I won't go into that at the moment. I just want to show you why I've got sphagnum moss. Right, so they're dug out of a garden, and they've not got much root zone. They've got some good anchor roots and some good tap roots, but not much in the uh, respective feeder roots, uh, the little tiny ones, the little roots that you find in plants. So what uh, you can do is you can actually take out the plant, shake away most of the soil that's around it, and put it into a plant pot and then fill backfill the plant pot with sphagnum moss. What sphagnum moss does is it encourages a regrowth of uh, the roots, the little feeder roots. Uh, the person who I listened to couldn't explain why this happens, as I can't. I can only surmise and guess that it could be the fact that these things are kind of, you know, the sphagnum moss kind of, uh, is, is holds on to moisture, and it'll have some sort of nutrient in there going on, I should think, a little bit. But it holds on to that, so so anything wet will encourage, um, encourage new root growth. And that's what we're hoping for here. Now, approximately six weeks uh, is needed to for this to start growing new root systems or new root zone, and maybe longer. Who knows? This is an experiment for me as well. So I'm I'm testing this. So that's literally, you, you put your, the whole little, it's a little tree in it, you know, it's been like I said, dug out of a garden. And, and then what I've done, I've, I have shook off all the soil on it. You don't have to worry too much if there's a bit of soil left on it. Don't worry about that. Leave what you can because you don't want to be ripping off roots that you need. So what you do is literally just drop it into this plant pot, which I've done, an empty plant pot, and then I've backfilled with sphagnum moss all around it. Not too tight. Don't push it in too tight. Just put enough in there to hold the actual tree. Now, I've had this sat outside for the last week and a bit, but I brought, decided to bring it in here just for the purpose of this video, really. Uh, and, and then I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it alone for six weeks. Also done it with the oak tree. As you can see, there's not a problem with this oak tree. Still alive. Very much alive. Doesn't look like an oak tree, but it is. It is an oak tree. Uh, and I'm going to hopefully turn this into some sort of a dwarf little plant, which I'll have to work on over time. And it, it kind of seems counterintuitive that I've got in this deep pot. But the reason it's in this deep pot is to bring off, to get this root zone going so that eventually I will chop half of that root back off and get it into a, a bonsai pot or some type of training pot. So we'll get to that stage. Now, another thing I did, I got this uh, Daphne, but uh, Bahula Jacqueline Postel, one of the uh, best ones uh, from a friend, bought it off him. Uh, and if... Uh, if this video could also show you or let you smell it, you, you, oh, it's amazing. The scent I've got on this one at the minute is amazing. And it is one of the good ones. There, are, there is apparently a better one than this out at the minute for, for scent. But I think uh, it has a, a slightly pinker flower. It's Princess something or other. I can't remember the full name. But uh, I've read recently that there is one better for scent. But not as in... The plant itself, I suspect this will still be at the top of the tree. Now, it should have leaves at this time of year because it's an evergreen. Uh, two reasons they could lose them. And the reason I think this one lost them was that uh, this hadn't been watered. In fact, it might as well have been sat in a desert for the last uh, six months because that's exactly what it felt like. Um, that's one reason it'll lose its leaves. The other reason is uh, these take up to minus 10, probably a little bit more if they're in an, enough of a protected area. Um, and just remember that they do like sort of shady conditions. They'd prefer that, let's put it that way. And if it's slightly protected, then I suspect it'll go below minus 10 without a problem. But once it gets to that sort of temperature, it can uh, react by dropping its leaves as a sort of a defence mechanism, really. But in this case, I'm putting it down to my friend not watering it enough. I'll not name and shame him. But anyway, it's wonderful. So what I've done with this one, I've decided that uh, it didn't have enough root. So when I took it out, I actually had to remove 
all these uh, type of things here. I had to remove all these nettles. They had to be moved, uh, pulled out the pot, and look at them. There's a right clump. There's my hand. There's a right clump. So most of this pot was filled with nettles. So I've taken them out. They're in here. Oh, sorry, they're over there. Nettles are out. And what I did was I, I did a mixture of compost and sphagnum moss. Just an experiment, this. I can't say it's going to work for sure, but I'm hoping it will. Uh, so I've mixed the sphagnum moss with just ordinary compost, mixed it in, got a sort of a 50-50 mixture of that underneath, planted it back in, and as you can see, there we go. We've got soil, but that's got sphagnum moss inside it. And then what I've done is I've just topped it off with some more sphagnum moss simply to hold the moisture in. And so when I water it, it, it can uh, have access to even more moisture. So hopefully if this experiment works and this uh, bonsai master is correct, we should have some a new root zone in there. Don't be afraid to, uh, to not put it in Simply sphagnum moss because that's what it requires. It's not going to hurt it. Won't need won't need too many nutrients at the moment anyway. Uh, just plant it in sphagnum moss and just wait six weeks. I recommend. I'm going to I'm going to wait for six weeks and I'm going to lift it out because it's pretty simple to lift out. And if it hasn't developed enough roots, I'll pop it back in, pop the sphagnum moss back in, and we'll carry on with that. But it's an experiment for me, so it's looking good without a shadow of a doubt. I believe that those roots will be uh, pretty good. I should have really done a video before, but uh, I had, when I got these home a couple of weeks ago, I had to get them potted up straight away and actually potted them into compost first until I could get the sphagnum moss, um, and, which I've now got, as you can see. So look out for your sphagnum moss. It's not just for baskets, hanging baskets, although it is rather good for that, as you all know. And you should really line them with um, with this sphagnum moss because uh, it holds the moisture a lot better and then you won't have to water as much. But uh, try that. That's just a little tip for anybody that's not done it before and, and hasn't got a clue. Uh, some of you experts might have a different opinion on this, but hopefully one or two will contact me and say, yeah, that's brilliant. I've tried it and it works. Uh, if it does and it works for you, um, all cash gratefully received. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Uh, but a, a great thing for me would be if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's up at Grassy Bottom. Look on YouTube. You'll come across uh, several videos I've done already, trying to help um, more amateur type people, really, more beginners, even the professionals, because uh, I've got one or two subjects I'm quite knowledgeable on. And uh, I'm just trying to help you and encourage you and... Uh, Hopefully, it'll help you along if you're not sure what to do. Now, I've also got a podcast going now. I've done one with uh, David Stevens. Um, uh, he's a garden designer. He's been doing it for over 50 years. Um, as I talk about this, which is January 10th or 11th or 12th, I can't remember. He, he's uh, he's just been recorded, so he's not up yet. I did uh, Dimeud, Ga uh, Dimeud, Dermot Gavin. I did him. I did... Uh, a video, a podcast with him uh, a few weeks back. That's now up on my podcast site. And if you search again up at Grassy Bottom on any podcast sort of supportive, uh, what can we call them? Something like uh, Spotify. It's up on Spotify. It's on Amazon Music. All the big um, platforms, it should be on there. So have a look at that. Uh, tell your friends about it. And anyone else that you uh, you can think of, friends and family, and I'd really appreciate that. I'm trying to get this uh, trying to get this podcast going a bit uh, strong because I'd like to like to get more people listening to me waffle. As you know, I like talking a lot, and and uh, and hopefully you'll you'll uh, you'll glean some knowledge from it from what I'm talking about. But mainly the, the, the podcast is about up at Grassy Bottom and my sort of journey here, and as in building this garden, which I've, I've been up here a, a year and a half at the moment, and we've done quite a lot of work. So if you search search any of the sites, you'll probably find it. So I think that's about as much as I can tell you about the sphagnum moss, and hopefully you'll all give that a whiz should you need to. 
Uh, oh, before I forget, so, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it seems counterintuitive to put it into this deep pot, but what I'm trying to do is encourage massive root growth. So all this pot will have the main chunky root down there, but it's got it's got sort of like anchor roots really in there. It's got a few feeders in there, otherwise it won't be able to survive, but it needs a lot more feeder roots. So hopefully when I expose this in another five weeks' time, because it's been in a week now, uh, we'll find lots more lots more root in there once you've got to that point if it is um if it has produced some for you then what you should do after that is you should repot it in some sort of good friable compost uh, general compost will do it for now i would this is what i shall be doing i should be putting in a general compost and then a bit later on i shall be having something like uh a bit more soil based compost as we go along before i finally do the root cut I'm not a bonsai man, to be honest, uh, but I'm giving it a try. I'm a bit of an ornamental grass man, as you're probably aware, but I'm going to give it a try and see what I can do. Because already this holly tree has already got this stunning shape here. It's going to look great. And I'm hoping that this one doesn't die. I'm not sure about the oak, whether that'll survive, but hopefully it will. I'm going to try and encourage some, uh, some lower branches to come. And hopefully that'll happen now I've got the sphagnum moss into there. So... Thanks for a viewing again. Uh, like I say, if you could hit the subscribe button, it doesn't cost you a penny, um, but it will it will make sure that you receive all of any sort of uh, videoing I do. Uh, anyway, we shall talk to you on the next one, and thanks for looking again. Ta-da!